In this example, we are asked to consider this series, the n factorial squared over k times n quantity factorial. And we're asked to find, if possible, what positive integers, so for which positive integers is the following series convergent. So first of all, the positive integers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, And so presumably, uh, the way this question is worded, presumably only a subset of these will yield a convergent series for us, okay, a convergent series in general. But what we want to do here is we want to apply the ratio test. So let's let's use it. So I like to abbreviate the ratio test as R-A-T. Um, I'm lazy, right? So I don't want to write the whole thing, but the ratio test. And so the ratio test, remember, tells us that we want to take the limit of A sub N plus 1, the next term, divided by the previous term. So this is why it's called the ratio test. We take the ratio of the next term to the previous one, and then we're going to take the limit, right, as n approaches infinity. And this will approach some limit L, and then we can analyze um, L, okay? So the limit L. So let's write this down. Our a sub n plus 1, I'll just write this in, in two ways here. So in general, what I like to do is write my ratio test is a sub n plus 1, especially almost always these things are going to be fractions, okay? And so multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. And so this is what I'm going to compute, okay? So when n, when we swap out n for n plus 1, this looks like n plus 1 factorial squared. So I'm going to write it out two times, n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial. And then on the bottom, this is going to be k times n plus 1, the whole thing factorial. That is our a plus, our, sorry, our a sub n plus 1 term, so the next term in our series. This needs to be multiplied by the reciprocal of what we actually have, which is kn factorial, right, over n factorial times n factorial. I'll write that one out in two parts as well. And now what we need to do is analyze this, try to cancel as much as we can so that we can take the limit um, and get a meaningful answer back. Remember, k is a constant, and so k is probably going to be part of our limit, our answer to our limit. Um, so we're, we want to keep it around, okay? So as we look at this, we can do a couple of things here. The one thing that we can notice is that n plus 1 factorial is always equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, okay? So remember, n, any factorial means you multiply this integer by all the integers that have come before it, right? And so if you want to multiply out the first n plus 1 integers, you take the n plus first one out and you multiply by the rest of them. So we can use this identity here. The other thing that we should look at is this k times n plus 1 factorial. So k times n plus 1, first of all, is equal to k times n plus k. And this whole thing, right? factorial, this is going to give us k uh, times n plus k down to what? k times n plus k minus 1 multiplied all the way down to k times n plus 1 times k times n factorial. All right, so this is a little bit weird, but let, let's see what's going on here. When we write this out, uh, let's see. So we're going to put all. I'm going to put these terms in the top, and I'm going to put. So these terms are going to go in up here for the top. This whole thing, I'm going to expand out the bottom. And notice that everything here is positive. So we can actually, we can actually ignore the absolute value here. And this whole thing can be written as n plus one times n factorial times n plus one times n factorial times k times n quantity factorial, all divided by this product here, right? k times n plus k times k times n plus k minus 1, all the way down to k times n plus 1 times k n factorial, and then times n factorial times n factorial. And a lot of this is going to cancel, okay? So k times n factorial cancels, n factorial n factorial cancels. And what we have here then is the following. Um, give myself some more room so we can see what's left, right? We are left with n plus 1 times n plus 1 over this product down here where k is unknown, right? k times n plus k times k times n plus 
k minus 1, all the way down to k times n plus 1. All right, and one thing that we could do is we could multiply this at this point by k times n factorial to get the rest of it on the top and the bottom if we thought that that was going to help us. But that's just going to cancel in the limit anyway. And so what we look at is the following. We want this limit to be um, to converge to something less than 1. Okay, So that's the rule in the ratio test. So if we want this to converge to some limit L. And we want this L. So remember, our question was, when is the series convergent? right? And so the, the series is going to be not only convergent, but absolutely convergent when this limit is less than 1. All right, so how can we ensure that L is less than 1? Well, let's just think about some different values of K. If K is equal to 1, then the term in the denominator, so if K is equal to 1, then what we're looking at is really just N plus 1 times N plus 1 over what? N plus 1, right? And so this is going to actually diverge as N approaches infinity. So if K is 1, then this is N this is it, right? This is the only term that's left. And, and that's the end of it. So this k equals 1 is out. It's not an answer. Let's go to k equals 2. See what happens there. So now we've got n plus 1 times n plus 1 on top. On the bottom we have 2n plus 1, uh, sorry, 2, 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. And if we were to multiply this out, this looks like n squared uh, plus 2n plus 1 on the top. On the bottom, this is 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. And as n approaches infinity, this limit is 1 fourth. All right, and so this one converges, no problem. All right, let's look at the next one. Remember, we're only supposed to be checking positive integers. We were told that as part of the question, right? So you don't even want to think about what would happen if your k is any other number. So k is a positive integer here. So let me write down what happens when n is equal, or sorry, when k is equal to 3. Notice the numerator has no k's involved, right? And so that's why we're really just looking at the denominator here. And you can probably guess what's going to happen, but let's write it out anyway. This term is on the bottom is now going to be 3n plus 3 times 3n plus 2 times 3n plus 1, right? And if we were to multiply this out, so I'll do this in kind of the long way one more time. This is now uh, n squared plus 2n plus 1. And in the denominator, this is going to be, uh, what, 27n cubed plus, uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Stuff that's order n squared. All right, and so when you take the limit as n approaches infinity, the reason I say it doesn't really matter is because the leading power is going to rule, right? And so on the bottom, we now have an n cubed. We now have this n cubed term. Um, on top, how many n cubes do we have? We have zero n cubes, right? And so if you apply just this rule that you learned in Calc 1 of the leading coefficient test, right, for these limits, then what you end up is with, with is 0 over 27, which is just 0. And 0 is clearly less than 1, right? And so this converges. And now you think about it, as k, as k continues to get larger, right, larger than 3, in this case larger than even 1, right, larger than 2, as this continues to get larger, this limit will always be 0, right? So the ratio test is going to give us, so if for k bigger than or equal to 4, um, the limit is still 0 as well, right? It's also 0. Okay, and so what we learn then is that this series is convergent for k equal to 2, 3, 4, etc. So it really, that what we learned is that it's not convergent for 1, right? It's convergent for everything else, though. And so there's our answer, that this series converges for all positive integers k bigger than or equal to 2. So you can write it this way, as long as you know that that's an integer.